We are red. Okay, we will open this meeting of May 17th, 2012. Let the record show that all the selectmen are present. Uh, right now we have an attorney client. To everyone get your packets. You're in little envelopes. Mm, negative. No. no. Well, maybe, yes. I didn't get one. Yeah. It'll be in your package. Nope. All right. No, Confidential? Confidential, you think? All right. What? What is the Nope. No? Nope. Not in that. Not in that. Did you get did anybody else get one? Nope. I got one. Mm -hmm. There's three of us that didn't get a package. Um, right that makes four. Four. As a note copy for each. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she didn't read, right? Right there. Okay. You already got that, yours. That, this one goes to Catherine. <laughs> Sandy, what Thank would we you. do without you? Have our names on. And <laughs> Thank you. It does not look like. It's, it, look at, look at what I was looking at the cover letter. Come on, give me a break. Yeah, but did you read the, what was written on there? Yes, but it could have been everything. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't talking about everything. Give it that. All right, that's a good thing. Oh, that's it. That is. Hey, this is uh, attorney client, so could we turn the tape off? Thank you. Do we need a motion to do that? No, it's attorney it's client. Attorney client. Mm. Okay. So we are finished with um, our attorney client decision. Um, Cindy came, uh, asked to speak with us, so. You, you want me to make you wait? I'll, I'll make you wait. <laughs> <laughs> make sure happy to wait. Listen, I'm aimed to please if you want to wait. Tell you that, see you at 9.30. All right. <laughs> Go on back at 9.30. Well, it's actually about 9.45. Anything interesting? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tim's still here? Uh, he was when I came up to his office. be the next question. I have no idea. I figured the powers that be help me figure that out. Deputy I have several overtime. <laughs> administrative <laughs> part-time overtime. I do. <laughs> Is not used. Well, I keep it very, very, very not a public session. Really You've only like used <laughs> 59 cents. 
see how much it went. Yeah. I, um, certainly, Gus as a part-time person makes over 17. Mm -hmm. um, how many years has she been here? Joyce has been here for three years. Almost five. five. Joyce, do you know how long Gus has been here? Almost five. Okay. Since 2007. <laughs> but she started up higher than that. Yep, all the yeah. uh, What's her rate? Yep. Uh, Justice? 17 something. I ain't got a problem. Tim, uh, Tim I just asked Tim what Tim Hoffman is. Yeah. 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 Performance review. A merit increase. An adjustment is just because. I don't know what you are calling it. Merit increase or COLA. I'm not sure. It's not yeah, merit. I don't think we're doing COLA. Merit. Well, okay. It's merit. At least it's sure. not listed like It's just that. a merit. Merit. Okay. We don't do the COLA. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is sure. this is a, an, an, uh, an annual yeah, adjustment. I'll take the we have, we have, don't we have a... Uh, Merit increase line in our budget this this year. Yes. We do. This is not part okay, of that. So this is above and beyond the merit. The last sentence, Joe. Yeah, mm -hmm. this would be yeah. above and beyond right. what we're going to do. Yeah. I think I think it should be an adjustment because I, I just don't think it's fair. Hourly <coughs> rate and to go back for for all the years that I've been here. Um, <coughs> And now I'm learning that you can do this. It goes through the budget committee. You go through the budget process and actually mm -hmm. increase a, a line item for somebody that works for you. Right. For years, I couldn't do that now with Alice. We mm -hmm. just couldn't do it. Even though I knew legally, we couldn't do it. So, you know. So where are we going to get this money from? Tim has said that uh, that increase would represent less than $1,500, including FICA and um, retirement. So, so I mean, I don't have a problem. I just wonder where you're going to get it from. Yeah, me too. Probably you could do it. Well, just looking right now at administrative part-time overtime, there's 1548 left in that, which is. Well, that would certainly cover the adjustment. Only one that does. I'm only curious. one that that ties in for overtime is yeah, but then is that. that would take all. That would do, that would zero out almost that line I know, to yeah, cover yeah, her raise. More. So then, then I wouldn't, she wouldn't have no any money for She's her. only spent eleven dollars so far this year yeah, I'm in overtime. Stingy on that. Oh, I know you are. I'm not sure I work it. You'd have to be stingier, even. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's only We're spent safe. eleven dollars. I haven't got a problem with it as long as, as long as we know that the overtime oh, yeah. has to come. And she has to do it all. This is not have overtime. Oh, I'm just trying to tell you. Well, let him bust for I know. I know. I'm just saying. Reviews just in case. Case. What? When are the reviews to be done? June. Are you June. Done in June. June. I, mean, I would be hard pressed to vote for another raise in June for this employee, just based on the fact that she would be receiving a raise now. Am I wrong in in my thinking? It's two different things. You got two different. A raise is a raise in my world. Yeah, but she wants to bring her up to where she's supposed to be in reality. Whatever she gets above and beyond that, she's earned. Right, and when it comes for review, in June when it comes to bring her up to where she should be, you don't want to mix the two of them. It comes from two different line items, first of all, and you can always say no to the next one. You have the right to say that. Um, we can do two in the past. How we've done merits is the department head is recommended, and sometimes they've re recommended. Five percent. Sometimes they've recommend. I mean, um, five cents instead of two and a half percent. Sometimes they've, you know, it depends on what the recommendation is, and then we can say yay or nay. In some cases, in the past, we've said no. If you look at the past, when we've been able to do merit uh, increases, we've not always agreed with the department head, and we have the ability to 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 change that. You know, it all depends. It's all what you feel. Well, I think she's an exemplary employee, and, and I have no problem with the dollar per hour raise. 
um, it's so close together, I might have a problem in June, but we can address that in June. How about if I wait until June? <laughs> that, that might make me feel better about it. I, I, and not only that, but I've just enlisted her help for a, a cemetery issue that I have, and she was like all over it. Oh, absolutely. You know, so. When would this, when would you want this to be effective? Immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay. We gotta do this in the form of a motion? Yes. So I make a motion. Do we make the dollar increase for Kim Souls, um, Deputy Town Clerk? Take the really? name out of it, please. Yeah, because the position would get that much. Right. Whoever filled it. Name out. Well, that's good. Deputy Town Clerk. Tax collector. Tax collector. Well, you know what? The position wouldn't necessarily get that. This individual, Kim Souls, is getting it because she's the experience, the knowledge, and the skill level that she's attained since she's been here. That's why we're giving that raise. Mm -hmm. If she'd walked in here You're last the month, I heard say that. last month, the justification I see here is it's because of the other people in other towns uh, make more and we're bringing our person up to the level of the other towns. That's right. Yeah. I think it's in conjunction with. It's the same thing. That, I mean, that just gives you more of a reason why to increase it because, you know, here you've got somebody who's been here. She's been here over a year, year and a half, two years. Yeah. Two years in July. And she's attained a skill level and she's working at a wage level of a beginner who has no experience in towns comparable to our size. So I say that the, the individual, Kim Soltz, has earned this rate increase mm -hmm. because of the skill, level, the skill level she's attained. Mm -hmm. yes, having said that, I have to leave. So we have a... M Make the motion quick. Motion, yes. and do we have a second? A second. We have a motion and a second to increase the deputy town clerk tax collector's wage by one dollar. All those in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 He, he just raised your Abstain. pay by one dollar. Aye. No. She didn't say that. The, the motion. Oh, oh. Yeah, I, the motion right. is the motion. I just heard you repeat it. Aye. I abstain. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, can I just have one more minute? Mm -hmm. I just want to let you all know that. Um, and it cost us anything? No, nothing cost you a cent. I'm bringing it in. Bringing it in. Um, we're right in the middle of the leaning process. I'm going to be leaning on June 23rd. Okay. I'm going to be deeding on July 30th. And before before I get the get close to the deeding process, I'll bring up all the descriptions and um, thus forth for you to, to review it mm -hmm. uh, for the deeding. Um, there's some trailers um, that if it goes up to deed and you don't accept, I'm, I'm definitely taking them to court. There's some that were up for deeding last year that haven't complied. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. And that's all I got. Do we have a, a will we be getting a list of for dating? Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I'll give you descriptions in my comments. The, the list now of the deed process will, as of what date, if they don't pay, they'll be deeded? July 30th. July 30th, okay. Yeah. So when it gets close, you know, a month out, we'll, we'll get you all that information. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any questions for me? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. Did we, um, I can't say it on. <laughs> the hardship when we were going back to process. How did that work out? She, okay. No, not the the other one, not the. No, can I have the list? Do you have the list there? Oh, the lean. I don't have the lean. The lean. The lean. This is the lean. Yeah. 
the this one. Ones? This one. Which one are you talking about? Yeah. Information. See yeah. if I can get yes. it. Yes. Okay. okay. The one you're referring to, we haven't received oh. information yet. But uh, that, is that that? Uh, Okay, so they're That's getting good. the information to us and we're going through that process and everything. Okay, now, if it... I thought they were going to do banking. No. No. Things have changed. Okay. All right. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll try to keep you in the loop on that one. Yes, please do. All right. Okay. Okay, approval of minutes. Terry, how are you? Good. I'll make a motion to bring the minutes of March 22nd, 2012 to the floor for discussion and ultimate approval. Second. Motion's been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Page two, under paragraph, fifth line. The word the should be they. Paragraph two, fifth line. Paragraph three, fifth line. The word is the, and it should be they. They choose to. Page three, Merrick is spelt incorrectly. I don't think there's a C in his name. Also, in that same, uh, the last paragraph where it talks about uh, Helen Hanks and what have you, the next sentence says, requested the selectmen reappoint Kathy Mitchell, Ben Wadley, and John Scanlon. And then it says John's appointment's not up, it's Paul Rushlow, but it doesn't say whether uh, the, these people were, re were appointed or not. Is that an oversight? Or did, no, did George will check it into this with the town clerk. Well, I believe we did. Scanlon. I believe we did that at a later I meeting right. after we found out that it was right. Paul Rushlow and not not having been right. here that night. Subsequent, <laughs> right, right. Rather than appoint the, all of them, we decided to hold off on the entire appointment for the conservation, and then we did it at a later meeting. Everybody's up to date.
on page four, when we're talking about the planning board, uh, it seems like it's just dead ended on that sen sentence. I think that should be. Well, it just said that Jane said when the planning board meets, they will bring their recommendations to the selectmen. came in with the problem. It doesn't sound to me like the problem was resolved in that paragraph, other than the fact she's bringing in recommendations to the selectmen. I might be wrong, but it's the way I read it. So she came in with the problem, told us what the problem was, and then the selectmen didn't give any feedback here in this paragraph. Right. Right. Oh, so it's further down? Okay. Mm-hmm, at best. Anybody else have any corrections? Or, I don't see where it's further on here. Oh, okay. I got you. Um, uh, do you want to leave it just like that? Um, well, I, I was going to say the sentence before said Jane is concerned because the names on the list, list have not been discussed with her or the other members first. And then she, Jane went said when the planning board meets, they will bring the recommendations I would say back to the selectmen and just change it and have it say back to the selectmen to let them know what their thoughts were. And then whatever that works. the next set of minutes is going to say. Okay. Yeah, that one. Okay. Any other changes, corrections, additions, no. concerns? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of March 22nd, 2012 as corrected. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay. One abstention. Okay. We'll um, skip over to let's hold our thought on the um, where is the non-publics anyway? Do we have them? Okay. No, just as long as their initials were all set, so everybody knows that we need to an read an initial 322 non publics. Okay. Okay. Um, Terry Page is here with us from Community Action Winnipesaukee Transit. Um, we had a meeting the other day, a monthly meeting, and Terry brought up some issues regarding the bus and I thought it would be best for her to come in and explain them rather than um, rely on me to pass the information back on to you. So um, Terry, why don't you, um, Joe Jessamine, Al LaPlante, Sandy Plessner. Terry and I are old pals. Yep. Good to see you guys. Thanks for having me. Actually, this is one of the times where it's a good issue. <laughs> we're coming back on the main street. Woohoo! We have to figure out where. 
So um, what I did is I just printed out some materials for you guys to have a sense of, Pat's seen it all, but I did a few maps to show the main change to the route itself as we're going back out to the Walmart Plaza at Guilford. And by extending it out that far, it meant that we had to adjust the rest of the route to be able to get the timings to work. Mm -hmm. So we've changed the times coming back down through the rest of the route as well. And one of the requests and um, suggestions that we consistently got after we made these changes was to, you've, you've already got I one. Got one. Was to have um, the stops back on. If you have one for yeah, Catherine, that would be back great. Back on Main Street here in Tilton on Central Street, Franklin. And, oh, so we fit that into the schedule as well. So we're trying to get back here on Main Street to be more visible. And then again, when we're down in Central Street in Franklin, so that the bus, people see the bus more frequently, we have bus signs up so that they know that we're actually there, which right. would be really cool. And Pat brought up a really great point of hoping, hope, hopefully being able to tap into some of the, you know, late and teenagers, young adults that are here on Main Street trying to get to places that don't have any way to do it. So if we're here on Main Street, that may be a pool of folks that we're also going to be able to tap into to get onto the bus and get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. So then the issue becomes, where are we going to do that? <laughs> and what is that going to look like? Right. So Pat has suggested that there were a couple of municipal parking lots that we might be able to use that would fit the bill. Um, Basically what we need to do if we're going to actually stop on Main Street, it would require two parking spaces as enough space for us to be able to pull in be parallel to the sidewalk so we could have safe loading and unloading of mm -hmm. riders um, and then be able to pull back out into traffic. So that's a big chunk of space. On, on both Main sides Street, of the street. Right, to be able to do it. So I wanted to come and talk to you guys about what you think and where we could do it and what that would look like. <laughs> I know our parking downtown is prime, so we were kind of thinking that what would be an easy in-out access to Main Street and still be focused, and I, I had thought of the network manager municipal parking lot. Is that the Providian lot? Or no. Right, no. Right behind it. Right behind it. Right behind it. The other one um, I was I, I kind of half thought about was the Tilton House of Pizza, but sort of in the back by the river, um, and it wouldn't be using up our Main Street prime spots. Can the, they swing around that? Can the short bus swing around that corner? I drove down through it after we talked, and it looks like it would be fine this time of year. My one concern would be. Winter. Right, with snow removal and the, the right. cars, I know, creep out because the snow banks start getting bigger. And at that point, I'm not sure if there'd be enough clearance for us to get down and through there. Well, right. it, being a, a municipal parking lot area, though, there's no cars after midnight, so all of them are cleared so that they are cleared parking. properly for parking. Yeah, there um, are no snow banks. There's, there. Right, there's, so there's no snow banks to, to the next day. They're, um, that's I guess one of our reasons yeah. for the ordinance. My only question about using the that lot, I think the uh, lot over by network managers might be better because he's got the light to turn to get in there and to turn and to get out. But also, it's not that busy. Right. You get into the uh, Tilton House of Pizza lot, and Sometimes. a lot of people use that lot. And not everybody parks the way they're supposed to. So it could lead to a lot of congestion and, and problems for the bus, you know, trying to get it in and out, especially if somebody has left themselves way out. Or they parked on the cur on the by the yeah. rail, right? Like they or they park there. yeah along there and you know let, leave their rear end. Yeah, day. it is. Is that now when I drove down to that network lot that I think you guys are talking yeah. about? Yeah, it would be this side. It doesn't look like there is two ways in and out. Like you have to actually back up. Oh, no. Yeah, there's no two ways. It's one way, one way in, one way out. So what are you yeah, talking about? Yeah. I thought you could swing right around the Providian building. Not, Not the, the Providian, Providian, no. Behind it. No. no. Oh, the IT place. Right at the lights. The old, the old post office. Oh. The old post office. Oh, oh, oh. Never mind. 
the old post office. Um, I'm thinking about the blooming iris. I don't know why, but well, that location. The other, the other thing is behind the Providian. Yeah. Good park right there. You can swing right in there and, and pick them up right behind the Providian and, and then swing up. And on the way down, you swing in there, pick them up behind the Providian, and then The swing. old Northway Bank. It's right on the corner. Just, where, you know where yeah. T-Hops is, right across the street. Yeah. Well, is that, now is that different from... Not where the ATM or? is. Okay. It's behind the actual... Big bank. Right. We have a, we have a big a little line. road right there. There's, there's, an in, there's ins and outs. There's a right up here you can go in. So well. let me go get right. her a map. Right here. So we see where the entrance is. I'll get her a map of it. Right here. Right. I have the colored ones here. Now this doesn't really show. So. Oh, yeah, it shows a lot. Church, this is uh, Church right Street. Here. All right, so this street right here. Yeah. And then this is the parking right here. Oh, okay. You so you would, here. you so can either like go between, this way, this is municipal parking, yeah. and just go here, pick them up here, and come out here. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. Come go in, in there, right there, come out there. This way, yeah. you come up around. Oh, like that, that way, way. Okay. Go this way. That way, and out this way, right. and all the way around. Cool. Yep. There's two little streets right here. The one closest to this building you can go out. Is you can go out. You go in, and you can come out. That way, And this okay. is the fire station. Okay. But this B here is our parking lot. We okay. lease. We lease half of it. And we own this part. So we could actually have a sign, perhaps, like right here on the corner, indicating where the bus stop. Where would we, where mm -hmm. we right. be? Mm -hmm. And folks could come. Mm -hmm. could That'd be the easiest place to do it. Then you could just park. I think that even if you wanted to do a trip, let's say you were going to do a, um, a, a senior trip or something, and it would be a great place also for them to congregate, and you could always well, meet we, there, too. The other piece is we have a lot of folks who are going up to Laconia for dialysis, so they could potentially park there, mm -hmm. park their vehicle there, and we could pick them up, right. and we could bring them back to their vehicle. Mm -hmm. It right gives them a place to park. Right. It doesn't clog up the downtown Main Street, which is prime parking. Yep. So what about folks who are using a wheelchair? Would you be able to get them off and on and back to the sidewalk? Perfectly. It's perfectly flat. There? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's perfectly flat. Okay. As a matter of fact, there are a couple of handicaps mm -hmm. out back there. Yep. Um, right. But if you use the end spot closest to the road, you would be able to get in and out. The... the, the um, the road in the back, yeah. it, um, it, the Northway Bank is situated here and then there's parking here. Yeah. So if you use the space here, you could just go right in and then swing right back out. Because this, this is just trees here. And then there's like a roadway. Okay. So you have a lot of space there for your ramp, your, yeah. the lift. Uh, the lift. Yeah. Awesome. And it wouldn't and take we would up the traffic. And use that one spot for both directions. You could use it for both directions. Yeah. It would be. That way you don't have to worry about one signage thing. And the, only, the only potential issue I can see is if you had an exorbitant amount of people um, daily because there's a limit on parking what is it, a four-hour parking? But handicap is not limited. Mm -hmm. No. So not. if they had dialysis and they had a handicap sticker, they would be there all day. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm just thinking if somebody was, what's usually a dialysis? If you pick them up, it's like a four or five hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we usually, so you'd be be the first, usually the first run up through, so it would be like 9 o'clock in the morning, we'd be picking them up. And, then and they'd be back down here around 1 on the, the, the second run coming back down through. Yeah. If you have more than what suits the handicap, right, you only have we have two spaces? Right. If you have more than two... Well, as long as they have a handicap sticker, That's what I'm saying. You yeah. put them they're, the they're okay, but there will be some that don't, that have well, dialysis. I'm not thinking that there's going to be an exorbitant amount of the, like, and most of the folks that we pick up are riding because they don't have vehicles. Okay. Right. So the the folks that do do the dialysis, okay. we have 
three, four a trip potentially. Yeah. So and when they not they wouldn't all be coming from here. We have a couple from Franklin and okay. you know, they work their way up through so yeah, so I don't, I don't really see I mean, if something I think arrived, that might be a good place to start. Right. If something arises Maybe. and you have a problem with <clears throat> you need more than two spaces, yeah. then I think all she'd have to do is contact the police department and say, listen, these people aren't handicapped. They're doing dialysis. they got cars parked here. This is the license plate number. What would you expect of us if you... I know you want to put out a sign out on the main road, but right. to reserve idea. those two spaces... Because they're they're back to back now, yeah. so you'd be driving in and reserve those two spaces. You'd have to have a sign there that says bus stop only. Right. Yeah. So um, we'd li we'd have again, to limit that to like them. Like we talked about, it wouldn't have to be all day. It would it could just be for those time periods. Like we could potentially put up a sign that says you know, bus stop from nine until nine thirty, and then from one until one thirty, and then from three until three thirty. And, and other than that, they'd be open. I mean, that's that's an option too. When would be the last one going through? Three fifty-six, just right at four o'clock. So we could potentially say no parking from oh, a bus stop. Coming four twenty-six. Four twenty-six. So we could say par uh, bus stop, no parking, bus stop. Uh, when's the first one? Eight. Nine. Nine. Nine, Nine to four thirty. Nine to four thirty. And that way it would be Nine to open. five, really. Yeah. That would be a safe thing, nine to five. And then in the winter, we would... Actually, what we've done with the fire department and the handicap signs over there because of the plowing situation is we've actually put them in buckets with the sign, no parking, and then in the winter, the highway has can move them if they need to. Yeah. And that's wow. been the situation. Are we, are we decreasing our handicap parking for the people that are actually going to be going on Main Street? The handicap, I don't believe, is on the end there. Right. On that parking lot. Mm -hmm. We'll have to check that. The handicap, I believe, in this parking lot is in directly in back of um, Gabriel's. Right. So we have more than just those two spaces. Oh, yeah, I, know we have, I know we have up here. In the uh, municipal lot, uh, we do. We're not taking away... I want to make sure we don't take away from people that want to park there and go out onto Main Street. On the Main Street, I want to eliminate all their people. all their resources of parking and going to do shopping on Main Street. I don't want to eliminate all we'll that. We'll be anymore. taking two of the spaces. And how many do we have total? Uh, in between these two parking spaces here, thirty-seven. Oh, I'm talking I, about handicap. Oh, I was talking about handicap. Two. We have two back there. We have two back there. And one up here. There's oh, two, nine two, altogether. Two. No, because there's one in Network Managers, there's one at T-Hop, okay. there's one in front of Northway Bank. I just don't want to eliminate all. And there's all one here in front right. of... No. Uh, well, Evans, no. Okay. Hopefully we're not eliminating We're not eliminating any. Spaces. We're not eliminating any. Two spaces. We're going to eliminate those two. But those no. are regular spaces, those though. Are, those are accessible spots. They're right. Just, okay. They're just right. regular those spots. Those are handicap spots. I think... Regular spots. <laughs> So we're going to dedicate those to handicap. Not knowing, no, we're going to dedicate it to the bus. To handicap. No, no, just not necessarily. For the bus. So okay. the bus can pull in and park. Right. right. And not be, in, not be in the actual right. travel. Right. The only, the the only um, thing I can think More of. More than handicap ride the bus. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, that's well, the. Well, that's one of the. That's one of the things we're trying. With, right. To you know. Right. And I think I'm pi partly at fault for that because for years I've been fighting you folks because of the senior busing and being cut, and so a lot of people hear that you know I'm fighting for buses for seniors and a lot of yep. people think senior that's busing the, busing right. seniors and that's the only bus right. available and. We're trying to change that yeah, this, this that mindset. Bus, bus. Right. It's a bus. Yeah. There's two buses. Mm -hmm. There's a senior bus and there's a public bus. Mm -hmm. We're talking right. about the public bus. And seniors do ride the public bus public frequently. Bus. Right. <laughs> and it does <laughs> interchange, right. Yeah. The only thing I can think of, Terry, if we... I don't know with 100% certainty that the handicapped spaces in that parking lot um, Sano's parking lot are on the end or in back of Gabriel's. I believe they're in back of Gabriel's, so they're in the middle of Sano's parking lot. If they're at the end, then we'll need to move one in, but we'll take two. Um, you know, you don't. You don't. Can't remember whether it's on the end. I think it's in back of Gabriel's that we put the handicap. 
Uh, yes, I believe it is. Uh, the two on the end, generally, I don't think those are handicapped at all. I think we have right we have six you know. for we have right. six for the fire, and then the next two are handicapped, and then then we have regular ones, and then so you'd be on the end there. But even if the end ones were handicapped, we can make two more handicapped so that the bus. You'd can have to measure, restripe them, and he's already done the striping. Oh. That would be difficult. Yeah. I think that we would find a suitable place out back there right. if that's suitable to you. I think we can make it work whether it be right. on the beginning or the end. And then just put by the telephone pole a sign that says bus stop. Right. Behind building or something like that. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna put that on Main Street? Main yeah. Street. And then something will have to be at the parking space itself so that you can drive in and know that that's protected for you from nine to five. Yep. Um, we have, I know we have, I think we have four of the old glitter signs that we can put like stickers on and say WTS instead. So we could potentially use those. Yeah. For the placeholders back there, you know, bus stop, the parking bus stop kind of thing. And we have to see District 3 for signage on, the, on that road. Oh, on Route 3, yeah. yep. For my. For All right. So yeah, Considering what it is, I don't think they would have a problem with it. No, I'm just saying we, we have to consult. So District that. 3 is New Hampshire DOT, and that would be uh, probably Mike Kimball or Mark Morrow. Um, Mark Morrow, I would think. Mark Morrow. Mm -hmm. I think he's in he's charge District of it. District 3. Okay. So you'd have to take care of that in order to get the signage for Main Street. Okay. Um, it, I would talk with our highway director, Dennis Allen, and he is um, at 286-4721. <laughs> <laughs> and let him know that uh, you, you know, we'll tell him that we spoke with Selectman, and um, we want to designate two of the spaces there. If you can get him this, that glitter sign that we can make up so that we can permanently do that. Okay. Um, and have him take a look at, with you, which spa two spaces that you um, want to use in the back there. Sounds good. I think that would be a... And you said Mike Morrill is who I should call. Mark Morrill. Mark. And I, I think I have is um, five two four, five, four, four, four. six 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 seven. Yep. I believe it's six 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 seven. Yeah. yeah. Is it? It's five two four though, right? I believe so. Cool. Awesome. All right. I'll walk down with her. I know where the number is. I'll, I'll double okay. check. I have it. Oh, Probably. do you? Yeah. Kind of like you had. Huh. All right, that's awesome. Well, I just, um, since we had it approved by the advisory committee last Tuesday, it's gone to Lakes Region Planning Commission to do the map and the schedules. Mm -hmm. That's five two four. Start the process. Yay. 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 <laughs> Got to do public notices and potentially a public hearing, depending on when we get the feedback. But I'm hoping the feedback is going to be positive. So we're actually that is the correct, is correct that is the correct number Great. right so I'm going to make a motion to allow um, WTS to uh, use the I'll name it the municipal parking lot B for a bus stop they'll be utilizing two spaces um, Terry Page will meet with Dennis to determine the two spaces and put signage up. And, call and this is contingent upon her getting okay for signage on Main Street from uh, District 3. Second. So a motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Go forth and yeah, transit. Good night. Yeah, have a great evening. Thank you.
It's very exciting that they're going to stop the bus down there in downtown. Too. Yep, it is. Joe, you need to sign this. And these. You are. All right, that's the busing issue. Is you must be Matt? Yes. Okay. Is uh, anyone else coming with you? No, just you. Just you. All right. Come on up. We'll take you early. Does that mean mean we get out earlier? No, no. <laughs> Yeah, good. Come on up. Sit up. Right Can I have a seat? Question. Yep. Um, is he okay? He had hip replacement. He what? Hip, hip replacement. replacement. Oh my goodness. He's doing great. Excellent. Excellent. Can you yep. keep burning down. Nope. I know. Well, I'm Pat Constantino. Nice oh, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Selectman Sandy Plasser. Hi. How are you? Al Laplante. Nice to meet you. Joe Jessamine. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I'm, uh, I'm Matt Leahy. I work for Senator Shaheen. Um, um, I didn't really come with a specific <laughs> agenda or things I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, basically, I'm just here to introduce myself to the board. Um, so you have a you know, point of contact in the Senator's office in case issues come up here whether it's involving the town itself or the town government or maybe you know, you know folks here in town who have you may have a Medicare issue or Social Security, IRS, and anything involving the federal government base that you can point them to. That's, that's really Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, well, I know Thank you. Issues come up with the federal government. Oh yes. Um, from time to time, and um, I mean, oh, oh. Uh, for example, I know the senator. Oh, one for Catherine. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We have one selectman that's not here. Uh, senator, uh, talking about the app the grant application is mm -hmm. the Brownfield program, and so she actually sent a, a uh, support letter. To the oh, great. Wonderful. In. My understanding, next week the EPA is supposed to announce the um, awards of that program. So, so we'll, you know, we'll keep talking to the EPA and That's wonderful. So, but, you know, that's just kind of an example of you know, things that come up. Have you taken a ride up to, before you came in to see where it was and? Yeah, yes, yeah, right, yes. Yeah, so it's definitely, um, you know, you need some work, so. We're hoping, we're crossing yeah. our fingers on that, because I think that's going to be a huge win for a lot of, everybody. I mean, this will, this will connect the trail yes. to oh, it's so huge. many. Yeah, I mean, this is for John Dalton, just to make things cleaner and all that. It's, it's, it's been a good program for other right. towns and cities have used it. And it's, it, it makes a difference, it really does. So. Right. Um, well, our uh, town administrator has been um, pretty much involved with all of this, um, the EPA and on the Winnipesaukee, and yeah. she's been really involved in this. So she'll be very happy to see this support letter, I'm sure. Give a call or email me, whatever is. Okay, okay whatever's easiest. Okay. That's wonderful. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think of a couple okay. of people that will be calling. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. It's wonderful.
that. That's why I said it. Yeah. Where did everybody go? We're dropping like flies here. Okay. Oh, there's Sandra. <laughs> I didn't, sorry, I didn't see you Next. walk away. That's when you usually approve everything. You know, <laughs> put them on committees and things yeah, like yeah. that. That's <laughs> oh, yeah, you're the chairman, Sam. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, Coffee seems so. It's back in our packets. All right. You can want to read that. You can. Okay, we have this is from the uh, Governor Lynch. It says, Dear Friends. Who'd he send it to? Send it to the, uh, for the grand opening, but oh, it, oh, oh, okay. it came, it came in a little late. Right. On behalf of the citizens of New Hampshire, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the grand opening of the Tilton Senior Center. I regret that I am unable to attend. Residents of Tilton will find the Senior Center to be a place where the community comes together offering meals, health and wellness clinics, exercise classes, entertainment and transportation to local errands, for local errands. The Community Action Program of Belknap, Merrimack County will also have a home at the Tilton Sen Senior Center providing meals, programs and activities to the surrounding communities. I would like to recognize the Board of Selectmen, Caring Hands Assisting Tilton, Chad, and all those who participated in the fundraising efforts for their dedication and commitment to this project. One of the things that I love most about New Hampshire is its strong sense of community. It is what makes our state so special and what makes New Hampshire, New Hampshire such a great place to live. Thank you again for the invitation to attend and congratulations on the completion of this project. I am confident that the Senior Center will be a great success. Sincerely, John Lynch, Governor. Well, that's very nice. We'll hang that in a permanent place. <laughs> that's going to go in the chat. The senior Center, right? It's not. Oh, we have a couple items on... Uh, There's a restroom with nothing on the wall in there, I think. <laughs> Do I need a motion for that? <laughs> the... Um, <laughs> yeah, I said it. It's okay. Guy didn't show up. You're okay. I know I'm okay. Well. Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Told you he didn't have enough gas money. They cut the budget. Didn't check the budget. <laughs> Short of gas bucks. They didn't, he didn't check the budget. Hey, in this day and age, that's a credible excuse. <laughs> so we have a couple of decisions on on um, Tim's report that we need to... Uh, number four is the school resource officer. We just want to make sure that he's made a calculation for the, um, the amount for the total cost for next year, which would be the 2012-2013 school year. Uh, the total cost would be $69,481. That includes the um, cruiser. So everything is included in it. Um, So just take a look at that and make sure that that's okay, and then we can uh, approve that going out to the school. For the school portion of the holiday pay, are those holidays that only, is it that by 73% of the 2408, which is the total, or only those holidays that fall within the school fall year? fall within the school year, right. Mm -hmm. There's only cert a certain amount of days that they've contracted us for. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if that worked out to 73%, which is everything else is. Right? Mm -hmm.
I make a motion that we approve the $69,481 um, as recommended by the finance director I'll as second. the the amount going to the school. I'll second that. Any more discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That will be sent to the school well in advance of their budget season, yes. right? Yep. We'll probably do that this week. In number five, um, This was done in public last time that we agreed to, to make yeah. him put yeah. the 61 business park driver. Right. So this is the contract. Yeah. Which is standard. Right. So I, if you just want the... Um, This is a year. Um, six one to five thirty one. So we would need a motion if you <clears throat> just want the chair to sign in on behalf of the board. So and then moved. So second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The other question would be, be I know we are waiting um, on our other work to be done before we actually put it up. Right. So he's asking for a sign to go up prior to that. Don't you want to? I, I don't have an issue with that either. Do you? No, I don't have an issue with the sign going up. I guess the only big thing in my mind is... Uh, we have to decide on a price, and I would say that that would be contingent upon that. Because his name is Plain. Right, and that, that is and going to adjust yeah. our. We are meeting with him on Monday. Okay. So, Monday at 1. Yeah. But the sign can go up? Yeah. yeah. I would say that the sign would be fine for the sign yeah. to go up. Mm hmm. And then Monday, well. Hopefully, we'll come out with enough knowledge to be able to fill in where we don't have information yet. Correct. And, um, what time is it? One. One o'clock? Here? Where? Business back Where are we having it? No, business back. Business. It's going to be the, the uh, appraisal. The actual person is coming out. Um, I think it's. His daughter, Allie McLean. Yeah, one o'clock. Okay, I'll meet with Tim tomorrow and at some point and sign the papers, the contract. We just need to f figure out what you want to put for price, and we won't do that until um, he's not looking for a price here now anyway. Right. He's just looking for a signature. Okay. I'll come in and sign that tomorrow with Tim. Okay. Perhaps we should probably have a motion to that reflect I'm good with that. It's consensus for the sign, correct? Yes. Everybody? Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. And we've already entered in a motion for a contract anyway, so. Okay. Do you want to buy a business park drive? 
I'll give you, I'll give you a reasonably good price. <laughs> It's up for sale. Everything's for sale. Everything's for sale. Anything's for sale for a good price. If the price is really good. Yeah. No, not town at all. Okay, next on the agenda is public input. Do we have any public that has input? No. No? Yeah. All right, we'll continue. We're selling it. Mm -hmm. We just lease it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, we have a drive uh, temporary logging uh, permit for George Hast up on School Street with uh, very specific um, criteria. LGC government, uh, Saturday, June 9th, right to know law, public meetings and governmental records. That would be on June 9th, 9 a.m. to 12.30. Actually, I, I want to go to that. Okay, Catherine. This is, um, you will learn about RSA 91A affects every aspect of local government. This half-day workshop will review specific responsibilities relating to public meetings and governmental records, ample time will be devoted to participant questions and discussion of scenarios. Attendees will receive a packet of information materials to provide guidance with understanding and complying with this important legal obligation. What is that? It's 9 to 12.30. You know what, I think I'm going to go to. I'm going to the ride owner. down together if you like. Yeah. Um, the queen. Take the queen. Uh, I'm going, there's one on the 14th, too, on employees. You know, I figured with my doing the job descriptions and everything, it would be an excellent one to take. So, so I'll ask Catherine also if um, she'd like to attend when she gets back. Okay. Lock near Meadows, go solar. Hmm. Yeah, they said they were going to. Really? In the planning board. They were putting in, pa you know, panels. Yeah. They put them in. They've already put them in. The no, they're starting to put them in. Yeah. This is um, a wetlands permit note conditions. Lake Winnescom, 34 Lake Road. Install a 14 by 30 seasonal canopy over the center oh, slip yeah. of an existing U shaped okay. seasonal docking system on Lake Winnesquam. Yeah. Tomorrow there's a meeting on a pre construction conference for the uh, 140 bridge over Winnipesaukee. River. Is anybody going to attend that? I am. Okay. Meeting with Tilton Sewer Commission is this week. That was very informative. Our bills are going up 40%. Sad to see no residents complaining about that. Even better than that, the fire commission is meeting May 16th. That was even better. Um, for those of you that did not attend, June 13th is the 18th month day that of the the letter of agreement. Commissioner Clark wanted to um, enter into legal counsel. They're having a workshop next week. But he listed four options, which is frightening at best. The first option was G 
Chief Ober move into the district. The second option was if Chief Ober doesn't move into the district, fire him. The third option was waive the re residency requirement. And the fourth option was mediation. And when are they making that choice? Well, they're gonna technically, have, they're going to have a workshop and work on it. They're having a workshop, but as we all know in our selectmen's office workshop, you don't make decisions. Right. I'm hoping that they post it as a commissioner's meeting and not as a workshop. The it's on the fifth, right? It's June fifth. No, it's May something. Oh, that's right. They backed it up to May. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, that's May 22nd. May 22nd at 5.30. Yeah. Place to be determined. Place to be determined. Okay, we have a list from Joyce that the 1998 Ford Crown Victoria for the highway was removed from the inventory, and the Crown Victoria 2004 was removed on 515, because we do have a new cruiser. Where did the, what were the disposition of those vehicles? The 2004 is going to go over to highway. And they're going to make one they're out gonna of make two. One out of, they're going to make one out of two vehicles. Because the highway is no longer available. What's going to auction? The, no, it's just going to be parts. It's just going to go for metal. Not even worth the auction money. Oh, it's, that's sad. Well, the one it's they not have passing right inspection. Now, can't pass inspection. Yeah. So they're going to take one car and make it a good car, and then all And then it up. goes to metal. But we're taking two out of service. So right. what happens to the other car? Does it go to auction? I know the one car is going down there to be stripped, uh, but there was another car taken out, correct? But the car that the, the Public Works has now is a junker. If there's no value to it okay. because it can't pass inspection. Right. Is Did that one of the ones that was taken out of service? Yes. All right. I thought, too, the police cars were no. taken out of service. Okay, then. There will be another one when the other cruiser comes in. Yep. That's not for several months, though, as I remember. Right. Al, do you want to speak on this um, letter from for the uh, Brunel restoration approval for Six Emerald Lane? On the walls. It says a find attached scanned copy of approval to restore, reconstruct a retaining wall. In, in, in short form, mm -hmm. what they did is they approved them to put back a three foot wall, 60 feet long, three foot tall, 60 feet long in the front, and bring it up to grade and put back the original wall, which was already there, which was like four feet. That's 60 feet long. So they, they actually approved them to put another wall up, which I'm not quite understanding why because in my talkings with them, they told me if there wasn't a retaining wall in such a place, there never could be one. Right. But they allowed them to have it. So I guess I'm a little confused on that. That means they're going to have two walls? Correct. They went in the they same took location. one wall down. Yeah. They went approximately 10 or 12 feet forward, and we're going to put up a, I think it was like 16 feet tall, and fill it in to bring up the backyard. Mm. Well, they're not going to allow them to do that. Mm -hmm. They're going to allow them to bring up a three-foot wall by the water, bring up the slope, and they put a four-foot, between three and four-foot wall, now. Yeah. which is the wall that was there. Mm -hmm. Which, and what he's telling me, you're not, you, that wasn't allowed. It's not allowed, and nobody else on the lake could do it. But now they've went ahead and made the judgment that it's okay to do that. So, DES or whoever? Yes. Hmm. That's odd. Where is that located? Emerald Lane. Emerald Lane. And that's the guy with the backhoe right there on the lake. Escovid, yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> so. Did he have a permit my, my, initially for that? No. And, the state, no and then no the permits. state gave him permits for Correct. work he already did, basically. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Is that something we should be checking into further? I already did. There's nothing you can do about it. They made their judgment. And it just seems odd the state would do that. Well, that's the state. Um, he must be somebody's brother-in-law or something. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. In their initial I'll bet statements. you I can't fill up town like I'll dig up my beach and just call DES later. I don't know. Okay. Some things in life you don't explain. I guess that's one of them. I wish my state rep was here. Call them up. The county commissioners will be attending our June 14th meeting at 6.15 p.m. June 14th. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yep. Bring your questions. And we have the, uh, this was asked for the other night, if the Winnipesaukee Capital Improvements, we do have a copy of that if you want to read it. Cruise through it. Gives you an idea why our that's the sewer bill's going up 40%. That's the project for the river basin, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. We have the warrant. For five million one hundred and sixty nine thousand five hundred and ninety six dollars. Do we need a motion for that? No, we just signed it. We have an application for Parks Commissioner um, She was up this year, so this is wait a minute. This is Parks Commissioner for Marina Summit Summers Sumner. Okay, reports from selectmen. Do you want to go first? Um, I don't really have anything I need to talk about this week. Okay. Joe? Number one, Simmons Court. Um, as we know, Simmons Court has some issues with trash, debris, and so forth. I've spoken with uh, Mr. Allen and he and I are going to go over Monday or Tuesday of next week and we are going to look at Simmons Court, um, what is needed to get that stuff out of there. Um, and as far as equipment goes and whatever, uh, Public Works Department uh, with the consensus or vote of the rest of the Board of Selectmen is uh, more than willing to, to help out with this project. Um, but as of yet, we don't know exactly what it will entail. Um, I walked around the property yesterday, and I just have this terrible feeling <clears throat> about allowing volunteers to go through that 
there's there's <coughs> snags and holes and slippery rocks and jaggedy metal and, and the potential liability issues. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you want to go over and walk it with me and, and see if we really want volunteers down there. Uh, or at least kids, Boy Scouts, or whatever, because the potential could be bad. Um, but that's underway. Um, we have nine cemeteries in town. New subject. We have nine cemeteries in town. And I drive by the one up here by the, the hotel. I thought there was 20 yeah. something cemeteries in town. Well, well, Dennis told me there were nine, at least nine that he maintains. If there's 20, the problem just doubled. Um, uh, Catherine and I, I, I got out and looked, and Catherine and I got out and walked the cemetery up there, and fully a third of the stones are cracked, broken, overturned, um, this way and that, and little kid markers that really don't have a name on them at all, but they're just half buried in the ground, and uh, the, it's, in, it's mowed, it's whacked. The, Dennis does that, but he doesn't have the expertise uh, to, to do this and, and some of the work looked really daunting. Catherine was saying, oh yeah, we can just do this and that and this and this and that and this and that. And how long do you think that's going to take? You know, uh, there's, there's a lot of cemeteries and Dennis informs me, although I haven't toured them all, that uh, all of the cemeteries that he maintains has these same kind of issues. Um, as a person, as a resident, uh, I, I object. I think that cemeteries should be maintained on some level. If you're planted and you get a headstone in the ground, it should at least remain erect. Just me. Uh, in any case, I'm doing a little research and I've, I've uh, talked with Kim Souls from downstairs who has a lot of uh, expertise in this issue with an eyeball to going around maybe inventorying what we've got. She, she seems to know of a place that works with this and they have <laughs> records from these places and, and I don't know, a start, but that just seems, because we have no committee, Park Cemetery is Park Cemetery, and they're nicely maintained, but the rest of our stuff is deteriorating by the second, and it's bad now. So um, I'm, I'm just going to, like, as a person, just go and do this. I'm not looking for an expenditure of town money. I'm just looking for uh, a little help and assistance when the time comes. And maybe, maybe there is a town money thing, but that would be something I would ask for at town meeting, I think, uh, for, the, for the residents to take an interest in, in this subject. And if they don't, well, hey, we'll get volunteers. I'll get volunteers. Um, I would like to know what, if anything, is the status of the land swap for um, uh, the the pond, Tilton School Pond, and the, the adjoining property. Um, he called the other day, uh, Mr. Clements called the other day, and is working on it. He has got a couple quotes for the engineering project portion of it. And they were rather high, but he's now gone on a senior trip of some sort with the seniors and we'll be back so he hasn't forgot about us and he will talk to us as soon as he gets back. When is his last day? July. Okay. Uh, the recycling uh, what is it? It's not a committee. It, uh, it, uh, the fact-finding recycling issue with the town of Northfield. Uh, Joyce and Dennis and I yes. have been discussing this. Um, the town of Northfield would like to discuss it as well. Um, I've spoken with at least two of their selectmen. Uh, and just happened to see them someplace. I didn't go searching them out. Uh, when, when, when. So before we can actually talk, although I have the, the thing from Catherine from 10 years ago or whatever, uh, I need some direction from the board um, in order to, I mean, have a place to start talking. What are we talking about? Are we just going to brainstorm for a session or two and go back to our respective boards with an idea? Or how do you want to proceed? Well, I think the idea was to base it upon what, in the 2010 or is it 2009? I thought it was nine. Um, that thing was like 04 or something. Okay. Um, well, that the article was and then on the town of 
Tilton not having a transfer station and, and perhaps doing everything over right. in Northfield. Right. Well, what what w it was suggested that we would kind of brainstorm amongst each other right. and come up with a program that would better fit both of us and then have it evolve from there but that we, we could use that as the foundation right. to where okay. some place where to start. Well next week uh, I'll be setting up a meeting after speaking with everyone concerned and uh, move forward so okay. that we can get some ideas going. Hopefully by next Thursday um, I'll have something to report on that issue. Well, you also have some excellent people because between oh, God, Dennis yes. and Bob, of course Peg and Shepherd, Peg yeah, and Joyce, yep, uh, and I think they've got one other person that we wanted to. Peg was, I think, was originally back in 2004 involved in that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so after speaking with her last night at the Old Home Day uh, meeting, um, she's uh, she's very anxious to start talking about it right. and what can we do to benefit right. both towns. Yep. Right. Um, and the the cooperation is is just so wonderful. I'm so glad the river is getting thinner. Um, redistricting. You pretty much, you've got all of the information as. Some don't know, maybe I must party to the suit in the state for the redistricting decision. And I've been receiving all of the, the legal documents and petitions and what have you. Uh, right now, the Attorney General is uh, looking at the petition with regard and his uh, recommendations on moving forward to go to the state Supreme Court. Um, there's several, and I didn't bring that paperwork with me, but um, there are several issues to be decided. Uh, standing in the suit, um, what form it can take, um, is the whole law to be thrown out, uh, and so forth. And Speaker O'Brien wants to um, oppose anything we do uh, legally. He wants to be a party to that suit. So we're still in the very beginnings of this, but we're up and running. Um, on the 24th, which is Thursday, next week, at 4.30, uh, there's a new member meeting for the Belknap County Economic Development Council. And on Thursdays at 4.30, I'm usually sitting here in the Wadley seat. Actually, it's <laughs> going to become the Jessamine seat after a while. And, uh, it so is the Jessamine seat. It is the Jessamine seat now. <laughs> Uh, so, um, unless there's some kind of an emergency thing, I would really like to go and find out what these people are about. Um, and if we can bring uh, some orderly economic development uh, to this neighborhood, hallelujah, maybe some resources for mm -hmm. our local businesses or what have you. What time is your meeting? Uh, 4.30 on the 24th, next Thursday. Uh, right even as we speak, there is a joint board meeting of the co-op down in Bow. Um, Dennis going to that? Um, yeah, I've got my teleporter out in the back. Um, I've already talked with Jim Pressure, and uh, there was a there was an operating committee meeting at five. Dennis was unavailable to go tonight, and I couldn't get in touch with you guys to. I wasn't just going to not show up here, certainly, uh, and, but. Suffice to say, I guess, that as you're all aware, that this meeting, this you're not aware of, but at this meeting, uh, he was going to explain the decision that the uh, single stream facility in Pentecook is not going forward at this time. Um, there are no options on the table per se, and I don't know what direction we're going to go in at this point as a, as a group. The, the contract's up in 2014, yeah. so I'm sure that will be a, the point of conversation, and he's going to email me the minutes so I can get those, I will transmit those to you guys as well so you can read them. Uh, there's a consortium meeting at 1 o'clock on the 24th as well. I've, I've made... And I forget, I don't know if it was you, Pat, or not, that uh, said that it would be uh, uh, okay to have the consortium meeting here at Town Hall. Somebody told me that anyway. I got it electronically. I don't see there's any reason for 
Um, in any case, uh, I made that offer. Uh, it seems though it, uh, Belmont or the Guilford one is fairly centrally located because some are coming from Moulton Borough and right. some are coming from Belmont. And, and so I don't know if they're going to change it, but they're going to take it into consideration. Um, citizen during of the, the year. day, right? Huh? That's yeah. during the day, right? Uh, that is. That's at one o'clock. Uh, citizen of the year for the uh, publication of the Old Home Day okay. materials needs to be in by next week okay. uh, so that uh, they can get it to Piper Printing and uh, get that up and running. So I don't know what all is entailed with that, whether we're accepting nominations or whatever, uh, or when we're going to vote on this. Because if we need to have it in by next week, we almost got to vote on it tonight, don't we? Yep. So let's give some thought to that. So let's give some thought to that while I finish my list. Um, also, Old Home Day. Uh, last year they had vendor in the park issues. Um, I spoke with Catherine and uh, as a, in her capacity as parks uh, ex officio and uh, explained that it was a one-time only deal and that uh, a large percentage of that money went directly to the old home day people and uh, didn't have to set a precedent. Uh, you could put one in the parking lot and one go through the crowd or whatever. But it severely impacted the money. Um, I don't know what they did about it, if anything, on Tuesday night, but just so as you know that uh, the old home day committee would love to see a little more latitude in that, but we'll see how that plays out. Uh, the UST meeting. Can you just uh, explain where do that again? But just you lost me there. Right? Last year we had vendor in the park issues at Riverfront during the fireworks. Right. Right. And I requested via Catherine, because I couldn't be there that night, right. that uh, she bring up allowing the, a vendor to right. circulate in the park. And uh, we discussed the issue uh, as not setting a precedent. I know they don't allow vendors in the park. It's a one-time specific deal. And uh, I had watched him last year when he was doing it. I didn't know he wasn't allowed to, and he was unobtrusive. Well, he was allowed to, but we asked him to... Um Eventually he was allowed to, but there were very specific criteria he could not do. The park, uh, he could not sell silly string or... Absolutely. There was very they, specific things that he could they not... Put him, they put him in the parking lot and, at, and on the sidewalk. Right. They eventually let him under the gazebo. Because they would start to rain, rain or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and I was uh, requesting uh, for the Old Home Day Committee that uh, one of them at least be allowed to wend his way amongst the, the people along the path, even if he stayed on the path and couldn't go in the grass, you know, or whatever. So I don't know how that worked out, but uh, on behalf of the Old Home Day Committee, I did make that request through Catherine, and we'll see where that goes. Okay. My last thing here is um, we're due to have a meeting of the underground storage tank operating committee or whatever we're going to call it officially. I was the representative for the negotiations. We do so not moved. Second. <laughs> I think you got to actually say the name, Dennis. <laughs> you have to actually say it. Um, we, but we don't have an official person. And Joyce is not a uh, resident of Tilton. We need right. an official resident of Tilton. Um, I would volunteer, as I have a basis in this already, if you would be willing to appoint me. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Uh, thank you very much for your faith. <laughs> Um, I'm going to move forward, and, and that's, did we, I can't remember, for the life of me, did we sign that contract, or did we yes, just we did. talk about it? Okay. No, we signed it. All five and of them. I know that, really? Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Um, <laughs> so, yay, I'm going to start calling around and find out when we're going to have our first meeting, and I will let you know uh, where we go from there. Are there any thoughts from the, the Tilton... <laughs> Board of Selectmen about where we should go with the surcharge. 
because all bets are off at this point. The surcharge will be set at our next meeting. What is it now? Two cents on diesel and five cents on gasoline. Mm -hmm. And is you have two you cents on diesel means nothing. Right. I mean that's not going to help replace the tank, realistically. Okay. What's going to Well, let's not go up forty percent. I was thinking seventy percent. <laughs> Yeah, that would, make it like, behind you. that would make it like three cents. Uh, well, no, three and a half cents a gallon. Um, no, I, I mean... That's not supposed to replace it. I'm sorry? With all due respect to you, that money is not supposed to replace that. I, miss, I misspoke. Nowhere does it say uh, replace. Um, it's to close it down at the end. Um, which we, which you're absolutely right. So that everybody out there can be aware of that, it is a a uh, closure fund, if if anything. Right. Um, so I will let you know. You can right. think about what what we want to do. Just leave it the way it is now, and then revisit it, or yeah. mm -hmm. or whatever. You know. Okay. okay. That's the end of of my list. Everything downstairs is going good. Permit fees that we put in place are working excellent. Good. We, uh, seems we've came up to the, the real world with fees. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually starting to make that office pay for itself, which is good. Um, the thing on the lake, pretty much disgusted with that. If you tell me one thing, they do another. What, what makes us want to go out there and find or take reports and call them up just so they can give you one answer and do another. I mean, technically they're supposed to be fined for disturbing the wetlands or going towards the water. They never even got fined. The state didn't find them? Nope. They got approved, the not permit. fined. So what makes us, what makes the drive to go out there and do this? Mm -hmm. There is none. Yeah, but that's Why can't we have a meeting with circumstance? Can we have, can we set up with a meeting with DES or somebody to, to you know voice our concerns on what's happening with our wetlands and our approvals and they they know what's going on. It's just that uh, well, I, I mean, guess, I guess their process the board then right. we then they they have it rather than just come from a code enforcement level. If we come from a Board of Selectmen level to say, listen, this is what's happening with our permits, and we're not particularly happy with the way that it's happening. Well, one of our, I won't mention any, one of our conservation commission people on the commission, uh, he pretty much agreed with them. Said it wasn't a bad thing, but I find it to be a bad thing if if you're setting the precedent on not supposed to be doing something, and then they say, go ahead and do it anyways, give you plus. They gave him plus, and then make him re, uh, replace the wall. Then they gave him something. That's rewarding you for doing something wrong. I find that to be, that's just, I don't know, it's unheard of, I thought, anyways. I, I was stunned when you told me that that, that was the way it went. I mean, most people get caught doing things on the lake they're not supposed to be doing, they're fined. Right. And make it reversed and put it back to where it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't find it to be an unusual situation. Hmm. So, that's it. All right, I have a, a couple of um, couple of items. One is uh, Tri-State. Um, forget their name. I got it right here anyway. But anyway, they're the people that go up and check on the fire extinguishers. Tri-State Fire Protection, they went up and actually swapped out the two um, fire extinguishers uh, per the recommendation of the fire department. What is needed uh, in the kitchen was a K fire extinguisher and what was needed in the exit in the hallway was a 10 pound fire extinguisher and we had <coughs> five pound. That's for the senior center. This is for the senior center, right. So they did that. Um, Dennis called me today and asked me to bring it before the board about Vest Pocket Park. Damn, I forgot the parks. Uh, park, the, there has been no decision uh, made by the park commissions 
um, and apparently when they met this week there was no decision on their um, RFPs right. as well. So uh, as you know Memorial Day is coming up. He's trying to get the main street around cleaned up for Memorial Day, particularly Vest Pocket. It really looks sad and that's where everybody stops in the parade. So uh, I feel very strongly about that. I know if the Park Commission's aren't going to take care of that area right now, we have to have somebody to take care of it. I should appoint the... Uh, um, let me be Catherine here for a minute. We have no authority over the park. As, as painful as that is to me, I went up to 132 ball field today that has a mountain of brush in the middle of the field that's partially burned and just a nasty rat's nest. The tarp that was going to be, or the liner that was going to be tarped, somebody threw a piece of ratty plastic over and set a couple rocks on it. The wind went zoop like that and it's, it's unexposed except for the tarp filled up with water which is infiltrating into the liner. This is the one that, the liner that was the reason why we got the shed that and it was going to be housed in the shed. almost nothing in the shed. The $3,000 liner? You know, Maybe in the last... Yeah. In the last like 10 so. days, I get one and two calls a day. I'm getting people stopping me at the grocery store, uh, speaking about the parks in general, um, the condition of our parks. The, they, everybody who drives by 132 and sees that our, our thousands of dollars worth of ice rink laying out beside the, the building that it was supposed to go into is livid. Questions, concerns, and numerous complaints. I have numerous complaints I on that. I cannot justify any of this as a, they look at me and they say, why, how come, why, what's up? What can I tell you? I have no authority over this. Uh, but as a resident, I, I, am, I couldn't make Tuesday's meeting where I would be making these statements to the, to the Parks Commission and intend to do so at their next meeting. But I, I'm disgruntled, like nobody's business. No RFPs have been accepted. No guy has been hired for their, for their project yet. The parks are unmowed, unwhacked, untended. Our equipment is deteriorating. They want to buy a lawnmower and they can't put their... $5,000 ice rink away. What are they going to do with their mower? Um, uh, the, um, uh, That's a good well, he's making reference to it. Oh, I know, but I'm just saying, right. what, is it going to sit out with the ice rink? Um, I'm sad. It is. It's very disturbing. You know, I mean, maybe it's time that the board take another look at this whole thing about giving away our power. Um, I well, mean, if it's I going to continue the way it has, I would. If, if I thought that that was going to happen, I would make the motion right this second. Yeah. Because, uh, but without without the board, the park commissioners here to answer for yeah, this, I, I don't understand. feel like I'd like to do that. But I'd like to have the park commissioners come in next week, if that's a possibility. I'd like to sit right there and and ask them eyeball to eyeball, what's up? This is not what we signed up for. Right. Catherine, what do we have on the agenda early? Uh, well, late, because there's a couple of them that can't make it in right away. To my knowledge, I don't... Why can't we have that mode? Why can't we just go mode? Uh, we can. We can. Can what? We can just go mode. Just mow it. <coughs> Joe, that's the night of your... Next week is the night of your... Uh, shall we make our selectmen's meeting a different night? Do you, do you want me to... Uh... I can address those things. Okay. You write down, well, one, you write down what you want me to address, and I'll address them. Okay. All right. Whatever. We can make the selectman meeting another night. Um, I I would kind of like to be there to to do it myself. I still think this economic development thing is thing is important, but I will skip that to do this. I mean, I'm I'm really feeling. It's at four thirty, correct? Yep. The bound not bound comment. Well, I was going to say... If the Park Commission to here by 7, if you can set them up for 7, I guarantee you I'll leave there in time. I got it at Patrick's Pub in Guilford. Well, and I'll be want, back here in time for that. If you want, I'll go in your place that night. It's no, kind of to welcome me and, and show me about what's up. Because I'm, the, I'm the, the guy. 
All right, well, why do I have no clue what they do, so I kind of wanted to do it. Okay. We would like to request, uh, the consensus is we'd like to request the Park Commissioners to be present at next week's meeting to answer some of our concerns and some of the residents' complaints about what's going on with our parks, what's going on with the, um, the bid, what's going on with the situation that they brought forth with us a couple weeks ago with Dennis. Uh, is Dennis going to be mowing? Is he not going to be mowing? Um, this, there's complaints. concerns and considerations and a lot of questions, and I think that um, we're... We need some answers. Did Dennis give you the update on mess pocket? Well, that's what, what started all of this. We really need to get out there and, and uh, at least clean up best pocket We've been maintaining Vest Pocket regardless of whether it's been owned by the town of Tilton or not. We've been for years doing it, and we will be owning it very shortly. My understanding is in June, correct? June 26th. It goes before the Long Range Planning Commission. And right. The DOT uh, encourages the selectmen to be present at that meeting. Yep. I'll give yep. you more details. Okay. And then based upon whatever recommendation they make, then it goes to governor, the next governor and council. Okay. Right. But in the interim, DOT would be more than happy to just enter into a real simple agreement saying that interim, that uh, the, the town wants to mow it. You know, go ahead. Well, it's Memorial Day's coming up. We need to get it mowed. We need to get some. So I would really uh, like to ask Dennis if he could clean it up for us for, for Memorial Day. Yeah, and that's, if, you, if you want to do that, all I have to do is just email Mr. Biles and, and he'll give you a piece of paper saying that we understand that this is just an interim thing. Okay. I think that would be fine. And I had him confirm again that it's the, uh, it's at no cost to the town. Right. No added. Right. So we've got to make that clear to... Uh, but having Dennis yep. do this cleanup on Main Street may be a cost to the Parks Commission. Yes. Uh, I asked him, he said it's about half an hour to do it. Okay. But I mean, he should be reimbursed for his time. Oh, right, right. Unless you, if you want to do any mulching or anything, because he's already done The mulch the is things. horrendous. I walk the park. It, the whole park sucks. Okay, well. That's a technical term. <laughs> <laughs> walk so, the park and see. You could quote me. And walk that park and see me. what you think about it yourself. Okay, so in fairness to the park commissioners, we'd like them to sit before us and answer the questions. Uh, we have some serious concerns. And alert them to the gravity of our decision making process. Okay, so that's going to be next Thursday. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Right. That would be great. But I have your permission to go ahead and email you yes. to let them know that. Oh, yeah. Public yes. Good. Okay, good. okay. The. Um, I, ha I have been uh, alerted to the uh, fact, and I, I've let. Chief Cormier know that we have had, um, I don't want to say teenagers because I think they're a bit older than teenagers, sleeping on uh, Island Park. So I've alerted our police yeah. department that they have been seen sleeping in the park so that they've been alerted. I would appreciate that um, Northfield be noted notified and let them know that we've notified Chief Cormier and Chief Cormier I'm sure will notify Chief Adams but if any resident sees that happening at night or passes by and sees that there's activity going on there at night to call the police department immediately and then they'll take care of it. Uh, the the newly formed executive committee of the the um, that oversees the Tilton Senior Center and the chat committee had their first meeting and uh, appointed officers. Pat Constantino is the chair, Tom Gallant is the vice chair, and Iris Iano is the secretary. Oh, yes. 
it's just okay. okay. All right, we're going to pass. Here's a, here's one thought for citizen of the year. So let's give you a thought. We can't say it out loud. If you have another name, write it down. Okay. I agree with it. Thought for citizen of the year. Uh, Do you have another Joyce, we, we had Matt Leahy here. Oh, got it. All right. You can keep that for your files. We told him you'd be very excited to hear that Gene Shaheen sent a. They are going to make a decision next week. They are. Mm hmm. And he's on it. They're calling. Okay. All right. No, that's uh, the EPA uh, grant award for Ernie's. So uh, Matt Leahy was. In, were you here when he was here? He was just here uh, to let us know that he's available for any and all residents that need their help. And uh, Senator Shaheen's office has sent a letter of. Uh, support for this project to be awarded to Tilton. And I understand that she's been on the phone as well. So it, they should be making a decision next week. We've been waiting almost a year. So. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought too. So everybody likes that. Yeah. That was just someone else that he thought mm -hmm. of, but I just I, I think Judy will be able to tell you if that one other one is. Yeah. But I thought it had been. I just child proof. I'll go ask. I'll check. Yes, but we had to check on one thing because I think one of the names has already been one. The bottom one's already um, been. Well, I, that was just a suggestion. Yeah, I, you know? I think. Yeah, I can go with the top one. It's, I think he's already been one. Yeah, that would make sense. So too. And then the other name For I, sure. I, I suggested has also been 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 the. Uh, those are the only two I could think of aside from the one that you. Okay. Next. Joyce. Joyce. Okay. Make a motion. Make a motion. To what? To accept that. Oh. You have to make a motion. Just as yes, we have to make a motion to recommend. Do you want it known that No, we don't want the okay. name. Just say the top or the bottom name. To say okay, I, I make, make a motion. Cross right? out the bottom name. Huh? Just cross out the bottom. Okay, I make a motion that we go, we nominate the top name yep. for Citizen of the Year. Okay. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to make a recommendation yep. to the Old Home yep. Day Committee for the name submitted for Citizen of the Year uh, to be announced at a later time. Okay, great. <laughs> so that's the selectmen's. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Okay, Joyce, you're up. Unanimous. Coke. Okay. You know, I, I see being out of here and the sun still being up. I, I've jinxed us, I know. Make a motion we adjourn. No. Don't want to do that. <laughs> it's here. Motion no, to adjourn, so one second, it is so non-debatable now. That's right. <laughs> it's a good night, huh? motion. <laughs> no, no, we're already past that. So you got to sing with a smaller group of people. Really? Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm just going to... I might get out in time for, see Connor play the Barry sax. Okay. Connor. Let's fly. Okay. All right. I'm just going to kind of bing through this. Okay, this is a letter that we received today from Mr. Cropsey. Oops. Uh, okay. Have I seen it? Oh, we've right, you've gotten yours. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
So <coughs> you don't have to make a decision tonight, but if you could just read it. And uh, Sandy has um, gone through the file. It's been uh, two years since we've talked about getting a more permanent agreement with Mr. Cropsey, but in the meantime, he just wanted to make the selectmen aware that he is uh, moving forward on putting in the, um, uh, working on the parking lot off Mill Street. He has an agreement to construct a sidewalk over the sewer easement on property owned by the Black Swan, excuse me, and he's hired uh, a surveyor, local land surveyor, to help him plot that all out. What he was looking for from the board is if he could just uh, have a, um, a temporary construction access uh, permission from the town to connect to the existing walkway on town property. Uh, this work won't be starting for another couple weeks, but just wanted to give you a heads up. Where is he on the parking lot portion of it? I mean, I know that he has spoken with the planning board and said the parking lot was all finished, but I don't think he started the parking lot. Right, that's what this will do. Yeah, this is, if you read this, it's... Look on the back, you'll see the... Yeah, he's uh, showing the parking lot and everything on here. <clears throat> Catherine, do you they, have this? Did they send him no. a letter? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, but I didn't know whether it had gone out or not. Who's the letter for? Yeah, no street parking lot. He said it was ready, but... And it's not. It hasn't not. even begun. It's there was, a couple of years ago, there was yeah. some something dumped there but smooth you know just leveled out but that was it they took the foundations out and sold them in right yeah the foundation was removed right he still got the orange ball he had there we should get copies of the planning board letters and put them in here yeah well it isn't being used as a parking lot currently is it well they got into phase two they did a phase approved for phase two so, he needs the excess parking. I don't right. understand how uh, my contractors require temporary construction access to connect to the existing walkway onto town properly, property. Um, Moreover, the proposed sidewalk follows the boundary line between the Black Swan Inn and the riverfront for right. a portion of the distance. Consequently, it's possible for trees or brush to be dropped accidentally outside the easement since it's a mere 20 feet wide. Do you think that, that we should at least let the Parks Commission know this? You know? Uh, Catherine has a copy of this. Yeah. this but is we'll formally notify the Parks Commission. This is his parking lot on mm -hmm. Mill Street. And this is ours. And he's going to be crossing. He's got an easement. This would be... Um, mm -hmm. yeah, what's mine. He's got an easement to go right across here. Onto, you know, this is ours as well, so it would be coming down, you know, the sidewalk that we have that runs along there. It would be butting up with that and then going on over there. Okay? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> anyway, I was going to say, I went through Joyce's really thick pile on, <laughs> and I put everything together that just pertains to that sidewalk and joining Mill Street. And it's clipped together and it's right on the top. So if you want to read through the materials, it's there. Yeah. I'll leave that in the selectmen's yeah. file. And, and I'll get the plan How does the Park members. Commission feel about this? Uh, th they haven't received this yet. It was just handed to me late yesterday afternoon. I don't think she we can make it. a decision on giving them. Oh, oh, you don't have to make any decision. It's asking us to give him a temporary. Well, we'll talk about it next week. Yep. Yeah. you got to be able to look into it. Consider, you know, he's asking us for a decision to give him temporary access. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can do that tonight. No, no, no you don't tonight. have to do it tonight. No. Okay. No, he's not even going to be starting anything until for a couple weeks. Yeah. So anyway, I will. I just. Um, one of the things that I'm working on, I'll have it ready because uh, it will have to be on the agenda. The, um, in order to uh, accept and expend donations, I've been keeping track of all the donations. I know we've accepted some of them, but you know they come in so fast and furious. Mm -hmm. So I went through um, 
uh, January through April, and I have a list, and it, we'll have to have I have to post it on the agenda that you're formally voting to accept donations, and then at your meeting you would just vote to accept them. It's not just um, senior center. There's some other things in here as well. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So that yep. will be coming. On uh, Monday morning, next Monday morning, the highway, Dennis, Jay, and Arthur are going to be meeting at Riverfront Park with the uh, representatives of the Parks Commission. The people that install the irrigation system are going to be there, and they will show the highway department how it works. I mean, someone from the town would need to know exactly they how. They mapped it as well. They were supposed to. Okay. So, so, that he'd so is it up to the, the town to maintain it? No. No, but just so that someone from the town knows. Parks Commission asked Highway to be present when the, the system was being explained. Hmm. So you're welcome if I, uh, no, just says Monday morning, that. if I get the time, if any of you would like they to. They weren't there when right. they built it. No. Dennis watched it. When Dennis it was, on his own watched yeah. it, they didn't ask. Right. Uh, our June, I'm trying to arrange uh, for our June um, monthly staff meeting and a portion of that is our Joint Loss Management Safety Committee. We're putting together at the request of the Safety Committee um, a workshop on workplace violence. <laughs> what so, is that going to be in June? That's uh, the third Wednesday in June. Third Wednesday. Workplace violence. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, violent in the town hall. Well, no, I do know that with the um, uh, mostly at post offices, the, the New Hampshire Department of Labor, this is a serious issue with them, right, and exactly, so it's timely. Exactly. And I'll give you more details. Um, Wynette Groot, De Groot, who is our representative at LGC, she kind of sent me a template, and then we'll sit, sit down and actually do a program. And I'd like to invite um, um, the actually any elected official, I mean from other committees, but it will be during the day, it might be hard for them to come, but yeah. um, uh, department heads, town hall staff, and I'd like to invite uh, at least um, one of the people from the police department that's in dispatch. Yeah. You know, have at least one of them come up, be nice. And of course our regular lieutenants and the chief and the highway. Is how long a workshop is this going to be? Uh, right now, I'm say it can't go longer than I'm saying, depending upon how much we can cover, uh, no more than an hour and a half. And part of that time will be just quickly going over some regular departmental stuff. I is think this we a, can Is this a requirement that you need to cover? The, yeah, it is. Well, part of our joint loss management safety plan is that we would try and do some mm -hmm. trainings throughout the year. By law, we're only required to have four meetings a year, but we incorporate that into each of our monthly staff meetings and then try at least four times a year to have... Well, what I asked is, do you, you want to put out a, a, a for Sambaton and... and um, uh, only if they're North part Hill of the um, local LGC. government center. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know Northfield is not. Uh, Samberton may. I mean, they encourage that if there's other mm -hmm. communities that are part of their membership. Yep, yeah, that'd be nice. Okay, the um, uh, Tilton Grange, uh, by the end of this month, I have to submit our uh, updated property schedules for our insurance, and I got a couple, at least six weeks ago, I had distributed it to department heads so we could update changes. So we've updated our vehicles and and um, checked to make sure that all the things that the Parks Commission has added. But one thing we need to look at is the Grange Hall. So um, senior center, senior center. And I also noticed they had the wrong address, so I went ahead and changed the address. But um, if you're executive committee, or perhaps you could get together with. Executive com committee would be the best, and see if we should be updating the building value and the contents value. This is what's on it now. Well, you definitely should be updating the uh, building value. I mean, what it was be mm. before and what it was. Well, this is what's existing, and also the uh, contents. Contents. Yeah. Uh, obvious. Oh, yeah. This value was based on um, two. Years ago, sure when they, they actually did an appraisal, they sent the an appraisal company out. I don't know if you remember, we 
the board looked mm -hmm. at the appraisals and we we uh, asked that some be adjusted. Um, they don't automatically come out, but I think that just to protect ourselves, we should go ahead and uh, increase that value. So uh, we need, would need to come up with those values before May 31st. And I would, in order to come up with the values, you'd, you'd have to do a an assessment of fixed assets first for us. Yes, we do need that as well. So, mm -hmm. in order, you, you'll have to come up and spend yes. some time and get fixed ass assets and then... We need to tag everything. I was going to say that you're going to tag them. What, what I was going to suggest is maybe Cindy and I can go up together and do that. It'll go much quicker if it's two people. One person writing and another person calling off um, serial numbers. Well, you don't have to do pots and pans because you're not tagging Oh, no, those. no, no, no. But, but I mean, I mean like the fixed, yeah. your, like the island and the TV and the yes. entertainment, yeah, stuff and like we that. should somehow get put stickers on them saying the property of the town of Tilton. Inconspicuous places. Yes. Thank you. So I know when Catherine Wisner and I were doing the uh, air conditioners, it just went so much easier having two people. One, oh, yeah. one was on the floor. <laughs> okay. Well, some of the things that were donated to us, we have values of them, so we know what the value of okay. it is. So that would, might well. be easier for you. Joe, did you update them on the redistricting? Okay. Um, I have not sent the tree letter yet from last week to the uh, Cropsey and Abbott, but I have it right here. It will go out. Yes, you did. Let's talk about that. I talked about that already. Um, Beach Street, um, the water has officially been turned off. And um, I have to do this tomorrow because Attorney McGuffin has been sending me regular emails to do our final accounting. Uh, so I only have one more month's electric bill. And he said to uh, stay, he had given us a, an amount to escrow for um, filing all the um, motions for the interpleader. And we had set aside in that or in our budget five thousand twenty nine Beach Street, and he said to stay with that that number for now. What isn't used will stay with the court. Did you ever get that straightened out with the owner? Uh, the way uh, uh, Scott told me was to make sure I had a physical address for him, which he did provide, so that all the notices that we file with the court, we give that to the court to the and the court, court and will notify them. him okay. and we we have nothing to do with so it. I just have to it. provide copies of all of our um, canceled checks and and um, how the costs were associated with the sale. Um, from the Belknap County Economic Development Corporation, their executive director, Carmine, had sent a notice that Citizens Financial Group has a growing communities initiative <clears throat> that's available between $15,000 and $35,000 that can be awarded to qualified nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. So I was going to give this to Main Street program, but also I forward it to um, WRTA because, as you know, we're raising money for the bridge. And also, but the Main Street program was defunct. Well, they were still going to do something. They were going to. They were still going to change downtown by the T hop. Right, yeah, I remember there was right. talk about that six, seven months ago, but no headway. And uh, well, they're they're also supportive of the trail project, too. And then the other thing, um, in fact, Carolyn has already hers has, has already written the grant application. We're ready nice. to go. We've written two for that because one of them will be the fallback position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it, I think that would be a great, I like that idea. So they're working on it. A lot. That's taken care of. Oh, um, the logging operation that was done on School Street last week, that's all taken care of. Uh, DRA was back up there again, said everything looked good. The um, DOT called. They uh, have given a permit 
temporary permit i spoke to the i saw that we would pass that around already okay this was in the copier downstairs. Um, okay. did we receive the yield tax on that last cut uh, they haven't been issued yet right now we're getting our report of cuts for tax year 2011 2012 three remember you signed letters last week to three different property owners so um, those have been faxed to lauren she'll calculate the yield tax warrant hopefully we'll have that next week for the board to sign so um uh, none of those were, were big cuts but this one was a fairly good cut that, that was uh, like several thousand dollars as i recall seeing in the paperwork it, it was approximately forty five hundred dollars for this one but th that's for 20 uh, 2012 2013 so we're uh, that one's in the next tax year so. I got a bad feeling about that well DRA has been out twice and he said things looked okay and then um, I spoke to the logger to you know tell him that he had permission I talked to Al and uh, Catherine Doss and they were both here to um, what you know is it okay for him to to use that rangeway and uh, both Catherine and Al felt it was okay and so I spoke to him and he understood it was a range way it's a public travel way he'll make sure he turns the puts the road surface back to the way it was and he'll even put the concrete blocks back that Catherine had talked about what about the met mud on school street they have to keep that swept up they have to okay. that's in the DOT one okay but you've, you've already seen that right Oh, on Panulo, I'm supposed to be writing a letter to Mr. Panulo. I've gone back as far as 2004. Mm -hmm. So I, the last time we had discussed it was in uh, 2010. So I just wanted to do a little bit of my homework before I. Right. So we're doing that. I can't wait. He made a handshake agreement with us. To fill, if we filled that in. He would open that up. Maybe he laugh. forgot. I like to think maybe he just forgot. Excuse me. I think it's worth something. Okay. You, you shake my hand? You shake my hand, you best better well, live up to it. Might be two different things. I hate to tell you. I know a guy with a great big loader truck. They could just take that out of there in about two minutes. It's yellow. Um, one of the things we're supposed to be looking again at again was the Hawkers and Peddlers permit yes. that you want to wait and do this next week when Catherine's here. Yes. We don't have much t more time to be working on that. I mean, we have to make a decision. Well, I know we do, but I thought Catherine would want to be part of it. She's the one that wrote it. <laughs> has she and have, and the ordinance? Didn't yeah. she write the ordinance as well? Have you talked to her at all about it? I mean, I haven't, so I don't have any idea where she's at with it. <clears throat> the other thing is we can discuss it and come up with our own idea, and then when she's back tomorrow, we can you know, talk to her about it. Do you want to, uh, any of you want to stop in tomorrow, and we'll get out the ordinance and the, see the, what it needs to be? The issue is what? Um, residents. That if they're selling their own wares, they can do so at a at another site in town, as long as they have a sign that that uh, identifies their building and what it is their their business and what it is they do, and therefore either charge them a lesser amount or waive the hawkers because it's fifty dollars a month. I know a guy that has a business, and every summer he sells bike week t-shirts at a tent at a separate location and sells $40,000 worth of them. I don't think 50 bucks is too much for a hawkers and peddlers license. Well, we're talking about but a resident in the town of Tilton. This is a resident in the town of Tilton with a business in the town of Tilton. Their own wares. So if they make cupcakes, they can sell cupcakes at a different site. All right, I take it back then. All right. They're not buying Unless he makes the T-shirts himself, it wouldn't qualify. So it has to be made by the person. Is that what it says? 
Well, yes. that's that's where the exemption language comes in. It's their, okay. their own right. If you make the product yourself, say if, I don't know, crap. Cutting boards, we'll yeah. say. Right. Candles. Right. There's a candle guy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And she wants to take her cutting boards and sell them at... I get uh, it now. Well, no, according to that, she couldn't do it because she doesn't have a business. Yes, it. she does. She does? Really? She does. An official well, one? She has a little business card that know? tells all about that it. That doesn't, doesn't mean oh, she has sorry. an official business. Okay. All right, well, let's say she did on, you know, in her home. She's Certainly. I understand. I get it now. Yeah. Now, she wants to take her product, and she wants to go over to Tanger Outlet, put up a little cart, and sell her wood products. A bakery, perhaps. Or a bakery. Can I clarify? Because I'm the one that brought this to Catherine. Mm -hmm. Because we're opening a hot dog cart at Tanger. Now, as a resident, I pay thirteen thousand a year in taxes already. Mm -hmm. The state coffers is fifty mm -hmm. a year, and when you're selling two dollars and twenty-five cent hot dogs, you've got to go a little crazy with the fees from Tanka, the fees from so much. Like, I'm paying them rent, I'm paying taxes, and it costs prohibitive. So you're going to have a Northfield Bakery or what, the Tilton Bakery thing on the front of your? You have, to, you have to sell hot dogs at your bakery. According to and that, not to yeah. qualify for the exemption. Well, then it's cost prohibitive to do it. So you're you're taking people that have businesses in town that are already paying taxes and telling them don't increase your business. But what we're trying to do is stop stop everybody in town from setting up cards everywhere. People to come in and try to help us build our business. Well, she sells some cupcakes on the side. With the if there were only one or two, I could agree with you, but it, potentially a hundred. Just I don't want to go there. Just think of it as your residences in town. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not mistaken, in, in your business is on your property, which you have rental units on that property, and potentially then rental units are paying your taxes. And I'm not, they're, not, they're not paying your taxes? That doesn't have anything to do with it. But that really has said. nothing That's to do with it. And I understand that. I understand your uh -huh. concerns. If you're gonna and I will take that, that into consideration. That's sir. why I asked. No, because they're not paying taxes on my real estate office. Right. That's another property. I'm paying taxes to the town. We appreciate you being in town, Ms. Tilton. That's why I sold one of them. Thank you very much. I was on the I I think that uh, I think it's a legitimate concern. I think it needs to be ironed out. We go through this every year, every right. year. What constitutes the need for hawkers of penalists and what doesn't? And then we have the argument. And in, in, in all fairness to Catherine, we really need her to be here because she'll raise the argument: what constitutes farmers market as opposed to not needing a hawkers of penalists to begin with. And I'm ready for that fight. <laughs> all right. Well, how about in? Does anybody want to sit down before next week's meeting and we'll get the ordinance out yeah, I and think a good idea. look at it and see what, what So be if done? in reality the exemption is if you know if you wanted to if you were selling cupcakes at your bakery and you sold cupcakes up at the tanger you'd be exempt You're exempt and if you did cookies and whoop, whoopie pies, the same thing. I mean, it's the same product going, the right. same business, same product going to a different location right. in a residence. Right, now here's another caveat, because there's a gentleman that has a um, food truck. Now he's a resident also of the town, so he's already paying taxes on the town, so should he have to pay 50 a month hawkers and peddlers, or he's a town resident working to pay the town? No. Does he have a food business Why? somewhere in town? His truck. Well, that's the criteria. You have a food business. All right. He has no food business. He's a guy with a truck. Hawkers and Peddlers is not limited to food. I understand that. But she's talking about a guy that sells food out of a truck. He doesn't have a food business in town. So that wouldn't be the same situation as her right. selling blueberry muffins. Right. And if you got a microwave and a package of hot dogs in your refrigerator, you could sell hot dogs at the ba at their bakery, so and you're covered. So let's let's take this a step forward. Let's let's a little, little bit faster motion here. So you're telling me that anybody who does food should be exempt? No. 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 I'm talking about in the town. If you have no. the business in the town. No. 
Not just food. It's food the same food. product. Food, building business. What are we talking here? <coughs> Should we exempt Tom from him getting building permits in Tilton? Because he has a business and he pays taxes in Tilton? It's not the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Is he going to build build stuff out of a little cart at Tanger Outlet? Doesn't matter. That's exactly what she's talking no, I'm just about. You. A business is a business in my eyes. You run a business, you pay, you're, you're going to be paying something to run that business. Whether you're in Tilton, Laconia, Franklin, or Concord. It's a different situation. It's not a different situation. They're making it a different situation. Well, no. Yes, you they still need to you fill out uh, uh, no, office peddlers, but you, you would no, just be completely. I understand. I don't think so. No, I did. The class that right. would be exempt because you still want to make sure that they get if they are running electricity to it that the fire department approves it and right. that it's not encroaching on some place they're not supposed to be encroaching, and that they have the permission of the property owner to be doing what they're doing and that they have their name right. of their business displayed. So there is some enforcement involved. Yeah. Put this on the list for making a decision for next week. Those of you who wish to get with Joyce and we'll come up with a... We can read through the ordinance mm -hmm. when, and get our facts so that we can make a decision. And it shouldn't necessarily be exempt even on the newspaper. Right. Because there are paperwork. There's paperwork involved. There's still right. the fire department has to go over. There's still the um Identification from the police department, everyone works there. Right. Right. And there's still a cost involved in the town. I'm telling you, that was out there. Right. So the state totally exempt. And they should still be at the. Mm -hmm. Okay. Almost done. Um, the uh, planning board chairman had asked to. Um, a lot of the publications that local government center puts out are downloadable at a greatly reduced rate. So when I was going through and clicking off, there was um, this one on effective use of code enforcement tools. And I remember the board was talking about that a couple weeks ago. So it was $6. So it is downloaded. Uh, Land Use has a copy. Planning Board has a copy. If any of you would like, I can just email it to you. And I did just print one out because I'm interested in reading it as well. Okay. Maybe there's something in here about hoppers and peddlers. <laughs> Um, I'd like well, a copy. I was going to say, I also, I would like. I copy. have many have of one. these publications at home because I've, over the years, obtained, you know, gone to many of the municipal law lectures, mm -hmm. and uh, I usually there's certain ones that are my favorites that I carry with me all the time because they have such good information in them. But I'd be more than happy to make copies of any one of them. I can uh, go over which ones I have with you. And we'll pick the ones that you know we feel okay. and make copies of them because you know they're good and they're they're easy enough to make copies of. I've done it in the past. So. 2008. Yeah, but the laws haven't changed that much. Right. But I have the one. Yep. I have 11. I have 10. I have nine. And we have some hard copies of the 11s. Yeah. The uh, extra copies. Right. Um, this we I think is in your that one, yeah okay um, it was interesting when we were talking with Joanna when she was giving us an update at our staff meeting on the water mm -hmm. uh, on the sewer right that sixty percent of their budget I believe that's the figure she yeah. used was these expenses yes for the project so it's uh, it behooves us to um, I know we attended that one meeting when mm -hmm. the advisory committee was. Uh, decided that they needed to get some legislation passed to give the advisory committee more authority than just being advisory when it comes to putting together the capital improvement program. And so there have been some changes there, but I think it's very timely that we need to pay more attention to this. I think we need to pay more attention to the sewer. sewer to begin with. A 40% increase. I get that we're paying money for the river basin. I get the increase. And I also get the, I get the, understand the fact that they've been running in deficit. But there were statements made the other night that they also want to do new projects. Well, I, I just can't see doing new projects if you're running in the deficit all the time. And you, 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 you get until you get into a comfortable position, particularly knowing that you've got a $10 million project coming up. Uh, why are we 
possibly going up Clark Road and Colby Road and doing all these wonderful projects if in fact we're going to put on the taxpayer put it on the backs of the taxpayers at a 40% increase. The fact I, that he couldn't explain to me what the DES regulations actually stated about their cash position with regard to how much their system is worth and what the requirements were for the fund and, and stuff like that they indicated to me that they hadn't done their homework. They were throwing darts at a dartboard. I'm just disappointed, I'm disappointed that there no there weren't more residents involved in the public hearing. Right. I'm glad to see some residents here tonight. I'm so <laughs> sad that more residents don't show up. I hope they're watching Are the they tape. Chop liver? I said I'm glad to see some oh. out, out here tonight. Oh, I thought you said. You missed that part. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm very appreciative that, that people come and become a part of the process. That's how I started. I agree with you 100%. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is, that's right. <laughs> okay, next. Did you sign the tax warrant? We did. Yes, all the signed materials are right there, I think. And did you do a non-public yet on the things nope. that were in that? Do you still want to do that later? Later. Everybody read them? Or? Okay. And that's really the most critical well, stuff. Well, right we don't need to. We can. Ju we don't. The only thing you need is that decision. That one decision. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Everybody else is all. So we can know. just m read the one decision. <coughs> yes. And say yay or nay. Yay or nay. Right. All right. And you'll know what we're talking about. Okay. It's the second star right there. Yep. you want one for this one or not. I, I don't know. I haven't even read it yet. I think it would be good for next week and then Catherine's here. I haven't read it yet. I don't know what it says. <laughs> oh, you made five. Okay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. what I'll do... Oh, yeah. All right, I'll make a motion that we uh, allow uh, attorney... Puffer to go ahead with his recommendation. Second. I'm going to pass out. Um, Can you take a vote? Yeah. All those in favor? Thank yes. you. Yes. Yes. Abstain. Yes. Yes. On. I vote. I don't know, Probably we don't have the so. background. Yeah, oh. you don't know the background, I'll right? I'll explain it to you. It's a, you'd say yes, I'm sure. This is attorney-client okay. privilege. I'm, I'm passing it out. We can talk about it next week. No, no. All right. Take it home, study it. Oh, okay. We have other input as well, so uh, rather than take up a non-public tonight on that without Catherine being present, um, I'd much rather have her present. Yeah. Okay. And you got the email Monday at noon. You have your 61 Business Park Drive? At 1. At, oh, at 1. I'm sorry. Noon was Grange. At 1. Yes, uh, right. We did sign the papers. I forgot to also bring that up. We did sign the papers for the USDA today. So they'll be depositing. Uh, go ahead. Can I make a public statement? Or can I make a public statement relative to the senior center? So we will be open on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, for a while from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Senior Center. They'll be open. Just so that they make sure that they get it. You gave them. Emily. Emily. Well, if you need any help, let me know. I can come over and help out. Joe's going to come in. I'll, I can come and help out because I live right around the corner. Lunch and go down and sit and eat lunch. Always you, Jane. Nice.
Not with that nasty water. We need to bring a bottle of water over there for making coffee. Really. We have bottled water over there. Do we have it now? Well, we have bottled water. That water has good iron. Yeah, it does. That can make you a man. I walked by a magnet and stuck to it. <laughs> it's brown. I don't drink brown water. I don't feel like you're probably right. I don't, I don't drink brown water. Joe, that was weak coffee. Okay. That would explain it. So, will she be giving us copies of everything that's been signed? Yes. That's all coming to you. And it will... Uh, Tim's very happy that it will be deposited in her in his the town's account oh. Monday. He's excited. That's all he wanted to hear. Uh, well, Cindy and I are doing our best to keep him happy with uh, getting the tax bills out. So first thing tomorrow morning. But you know, Karen wanted uh, pictures, and photos, so that they could send it further on to Washington, so that they could develop a. Um, package, if you would, um, so that they could let Washington know that the money counts in doing something, so that when they say we run out of money, they can look back and say, this is what happened in Tilton, these are the people that it serve in Tilton, so don't stop giving the money. So she's trying to put together a package for that, so she asked for pitches to... Uh, to do that with. Yeah, this is very nice. I love this frame. I don't think Tom and Jane saw that, so. All right, does anybody else have any other business that comes before us? Don't hand it to Tom because he may break it. Oh, great. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> Ouch. I wouldn't say that read it. close to her. Wait, Jay, we already read it aloud. You weren't here. I was going to allow you to read it. I'm going to allow you to read it. Is there any more business that comes before us? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, yes. Aye. Camera, please. Mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to make that, put the name of the person there. Uh, Marina. But she also.